Hi, I'm Tom Hignight. We're now inside our MyPad 2, which is a very uh, unique home. I'm going to try to show you these things. This is our first video we're ever doing like this. I call this guerrilla shooting. We don't have any lights. When we aim into a window, you're going to get blared out. Uh, we've got this funky microphone on me, so I'm making all kinds of excuses for why this isn't going to look like our high-quality production television specials that we do, but we want to do something a little more down to earth here. So let me explain this house to you. The MyPad homes are done on a cruise ship design technology. Now cruise ship design, uh, cruise ships have figured out how to make things work in very small spaces. They make very large spaces out of very small spaces. So the MyPads, this home is 26 and a half feet wide. Now if we were doing this in one of those professional shoots, now you'd be seeing some B-roll of the outside of the house and there you'd see how it's 26 and a half feet wide. As you come into here, this is not a very large foyer. i show you the outside and there you'll get your lighting of the camera come up. But um, it's a nice wintry day here in Wisconsin. And uh, here, Kelly, that's our camera person today. Kelly, if you go around that way, you'll see me coming in here. And uh, look down at the floor here. I'll show you, we have a hand scraped elm floor in here. And uh, the hand scraped elm floor has little grooves in it. This is uh, a engineered product, it's pre-finished. Uh, but it, it wears fairly well, it has a 25 year warranty on it. And look at this right here now, when this door opens up, it just clears this closet. Because in cruise ships what they do is they don't have closets. Here, step on in again. Let's come on through. And uh, I want to show you one of the first items that is kind of unique. Now we have a lot of camera gear in here. We uh, kind of cleared the deck here as we came in. But this is a hanging cabinet or what we call a hanging locker if this was in a boat. A hanging locker doesn't require a five and a half inch thick wall here. So we have 21 inches by two feet deep, a spot to put some other things in there. And uh, we use this idea of not having thicknesses of walls in the home throughout the home to try to expand the space. And I'll show you how that works a little later on. Now, as we're going into this room, uh, stand way back in that back corner if you can. I'm gonna see if you can get a good shot of this. Um, this is a very long room. You are now near where the fireplace and the TV is. You don't have to see that right now. You'll see that in a minute. But on this side over here, this is a kitchen. You just stay there. I'm going to walk all the way back here just to give you an idea of depth as to how long and how big this home is. All right. I'm sure from that angle it seems a kind of narrow, but in reality this is a very decent, good sized room. And uh, I'm in the dinette, so as you come in, you're in the dinette, and if you look over in this direction a little, you can stay right where you're at. This is a big double window. Now, what we did to our windows in this house, we wanted to do things unique because this is a, a very different home. Uh, it's been nationally, uh, uh, some national attention is the right way to say that, uh, that was gotten from Good Morning America. They came in and they shot in this home because this is 1,080 square feet. Very small square foot, but 400 uh, and some square feet on the first floor. And one of the ways that we try to achieve a largeness is by putting in more windows. So when you come in the house, your immediate thought is this house is big because your immediate thing you're seeing is this huge big six foot by six foot double window. And to try to keep some style, here we did something that's kind of different. Um, step a little closer. You're going to be looking right into the sunlight, so this might be a hard shot to get. But um, we did, normally you get either narrow grids like this, about a three-quarter inch narrow, or if you just shift over here, you get a uh, inch and a quarter grid. And here we mixed it up. We did a thick one and a thin one, a thin one and a thin one and a thick one in the middle. And we carried the thick one all the way through, follow my hand down there, to follow right through the window. Very unique pattern. Costs a little more to get that pattern put in. They obviously have to do that custom. So if you reposition just a little bit, just push yourself back just a tad. I want to show you something here. This is our media cabinet. It's set up to put your DVD player in and um, some of your various speakers that go throughout the house. They all go in this built-in. And uh, the TV in this house is over the fireplace. There you get that view of the fireplace. I'll switch places with you here so you can get an idea of distance and size. We're trying to take the small home idea and put it in a very high-end 
um, a presentation. So when you see the spacing we have in the house, the materials we're using, um, the materials that I showed you on the floor, the hand scraped elm, marries very well with this very high end $40 a yard type carpet that is a, uh, has a pattern to it. Now, if you wanted to buy this for a real large house, it would be very expensive to do a whole room. But this works very nice, and we've done this curve you can see coming through here. That curve is there for a reason, because we wanted a spot in this smaller home to even put something like a piano or a desk. This wall here is five and a half feet long, so a five-foot piano could go right here. Um, where you're standing in the dinette right now, and while you're standing in the dinette, um, you can see how we put in large furniture. The furniture in here is not miniature, which you might find in a smaller home. These are very large pieces. Uh, two full couches and a full recliner over here. We have a, you know, a nice uh, table here. You can see the fireplace. Everybody in the room, whether you're sitting here, there, back at the dinette or in the kitchen can see the television set from there and the fireplace. And again, in keeping with lots of windows in a smaller home, window, 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 lots of windows in this small house. Now there's something above our head, and you can look at it from that angle and see that we've done some really cool architectural piece here. We've taken our cathedral vaulted ceiling and we've added a half circle. Try to explain that to your rough carpenter and your drywaller, what you're doing. It's very hard to draw that on a piece of paper. But then we s took a flexible track light and put it around to give it that sort of a look. Uh, the big mantle over the top here, this is actually protruded off of the home uh, so that it's built out on the outside of the home as a, as a box, as a fireplace chase. And up here it isn't, so this is sort of an illusion. This is not built out, but you can see what we did with the tile. We mixed six inch by six inch squares with two inch by two inch squares with one foot by one foot squares, and we did that here, 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 there. One of the things that's great about these videos that we're showing on our website is that there's no time constraints. So if you uh, if, if you want to get a lot of detail, this is the video that's going to show you that. Here we have this drywall mantle. Drywall mantle has a unique drywall corner on the top. I don't know if you can see that, Kelly, but this is a special type of drywall corner, which we're using on the top of our mantles quite a bit. So here you have, just to show you the variety, we're trying to sculpt our house with various drywall corners. So here you have an inch and a half radius with a square and a square. That's all one piece of drywall molding. Here you have a small half inch round radius, just a very small half inch radius. Here at the bottom of the mantle, we have a square corner. And then when you follow over to this corner, we have another square corner. And when you look over here, we have an angled corner, which is made out of drywall. And you look up, and maybe you step back just a little bit, you'll see we have a second mantle, so that for folks who think that a small house can't have pizzazz or some style, we've done a lot with drywall sculpting, with a second mantle here. You'll see that we've mixed up our textures, for example, in the home uh, on the staircase. So. I'm going to walk right with you here. Here you get a good idea of our round flow that we have for our dinette. Now, if you want to get a larger dinette table, we have a version of this house that we just push this out and do a bay on this side. This house is built within three inches of all of its setbacks on the sides and on the front. So uh, we didn't have time or room to do that. On this other, um, I was talking about textures of drywall. Here you see that we've done a half wall as you come in. Instead of the traditional wood post or iron post with a handrail on top of it, which are fine, but we're trying to do things that would be different, that you would bring away from this house as a memory point. That you would go, wow, that's really cool. I haven't seen that before. And maybe you won't remember it for this, but you might remember it for a round dinette. You might remember it for a double mantles. You might remember it for a lot of different reasons. So here you have smooth texture, or non-texture, <laughs> and here you have a 
a rougher texture like a knockdown. This is drywall molding as well. This is hollow plastic. It's not solid wood. This is put on just like you put on a drywall corner. And we have to teach uh, uh, drywallers how to be finished carpenters because they have to do good miters and things. I want you to look at our round moldings on the floor here. I don't know if you can get down and see that. But look at how we had to bend that molding. This is a, about a 12 foot radius. And look at, I'll come around the other way. You stay right there. Look at how we took our Corian countertops and we didn't do a fancy edge to them because we're trying to be fairly contemporary. But here you can see how we have this curved wood work. This is a uh, about a three and three quarter inch high molding, all birch in this house, birch and maple. This little cabinet here, we don't want to waste any space. This is actually what I call a knick-knack cabinet. So you have a um, spot to put your DVDs because we showed you that you had the that you had the DVD player on the other side. What I like to do is um, right like that. See, I'm decorating as I go here. The faucet, and uh, let me show you a couple of things in the kitchen. The kitchen is really a favorite area of mine. My mom was a great cook, and uh, I, I like to add a little style, so we took the side of this cabinet, and we bowed it out three inches, and we made the countertop go out. Now that's done for style, of course, because it looks nice, but let me show you what else it's done for. If we didn't bow that out, your countertop would stop right here, and it really gives you very little space to put anything, and you know, this is a way to get some extra space into the house. Here's one of my favorite ideas. People don't see this. Uh, we started doing this a couple of years ago. It has to do with the cabinets. These cabinets, for a shorter cook, are wonderful. And I know a lot of shorter cooks, I'll tell you. And I know some tall ones too. But um, this is a extra shelf that you normally don't get. Normally your shelves in, cl in, in, uh, in, in your cabinet start here and there's all this space here that's not being used. Okay, So we brought these all the way down so that you'd be able to get an extra shelf of use and you'd be get this upper shelf is then a little lower than what you would have to get out a ladder to get to if you were a shorter cook. So these cabinets, the way we accomplish that, if you just brought these down on a regular countertop, you'd be losing so much countertop space for working space that it doesn't work for most people to just lower their cabinets. What we did, and here's the big secret, we not only lowered the cabinets, but we pulled the bottom cabinets out so that these cabinets are in effect sunken into the wall. Or these are pulled out. It works the same way if you think about it. And what you're seeing here, why this is rounded in, and then it comes out here, this would be the normal depth of a countertop. This has not been pulled out. This one's been kept in. But it's just kind of a really neat curve and creative way that we've done this by pushing these cabinets into the walls and pushing them in like a medicine cabinet on the upper walls. Um, you can see that we've gone with some really high-end cabinetry in here. They have the self-closing drawers. They're completely made out of solid maple, dovetail construction, and they have that soft close design, which is really cool. Lazy Susan in the corner here. You have a, um, a uh, dishwasher right next to your sink. We want to try to set that up so that if you're standing here and you're washing, you can stand in one spot and rotate and get your dishwasher to work well with that. This is your cookie tray cabinet. Boy, these videos cover everything, don't they? We've got our cookie tray cabinet. We've got, um, trying to show people, when you push these cabinets into the wall like we've done, your first impression as a visitor is, oh, these cabinets are way too uh, they're not deep enough, you know, but we, we try to convince people, no, they're every bit as deep as any other cabinet you've ever had. They'll even take a full-size dinner plate. So we stock a few here because it's just hard to believe that they're as deep as they are because they've been pushed into the wall system. Here we have the microwave. Now look at what we've done with the microwave here. We've brought this down, and because of the way that these cabinets are pulled in or pulled out, we have an extra space here. So look what we did. We did a spice rack, and this is all Corian again, solid surface Corian product. We did a spice area here so you could just line up some things or maybe put your hot pads up here. Very different area, very different way to do it. And this cabinet here then is a little bit lower so you can reach that a little easier. 
Look at the way we've done the cabinet over the refrigerator. Think about your own refrigerator. At home, you have to reach over the refrigerator to get to your cabinet. In this home, we've brought out the cabinet so that you're not having to reach as far over, again, for easier reaching. And because of the way we've got the house designed, you're not having to do a refrigerator that's only countertop depth, which of course they do make. In this house, we have a full depth refrigerator, but we've created an alcove in the wall behind it so that you can have that full depth and enjoy your full depth of space. Need one for a hot dog? <laughs> a little frozen in there from our last uh, lawn party. Uh, now, in a house of this size, one of the items that we're going to have issues with, I mean, if you can step right over there into that corner where the Lazy Susan is, I'm going to show you maybe a good angle of this, is a countertop where you could sit. I don't really have space for that over where the dinette is. It would take up too much room for it to have an overhang. But I wanted to have a spot where you could have a couple of people that would just sit and casually talk or have a bite to eat. So here we have that type of space. Two stools here. They could sit here and be talking to the cook. Um, you know, you have a nice sociable area here. And look at what we did with the cabinet up here. Our overheads are all curved, as are our lighting tracks, as I was showing you before. And we've curved our wood here to do a traditional cabinet, but with a curve over here. And off to the side here, if you can step right around here, we've got our recycler bin along with a whatnot drawer. Where we have a lot of whatnot of who knows what. Pantry space. Where are we going to store pantry? We don't have room in a house that's 400 plus square feet on the first floor for a walk-in pantry. And this is where, again, we go back to the cruise ship sort of ideas that we've been looking at here. And um, I'm going to get you dizzy because I'm going to send you back that way again to take a look at this. <coughs> this is a combination of pantry space, floor to ceiling, in this case seven feet high, mm -hmm. and also of back hall uh, locker space for hanging your coat. So we don't have room for a full back closet just like you saw the front closet. It doesn't have a full space. But here we have a spot to hang a few things. We're putting our, our vacuum cleaner in there. Um, just like that front closet, only a little wider. And this is, notice how we angled this. We made this one big construct made out of wood. And here we have some wonderful pantry space. Uppers, lowers, you're not going to be able to see very well with this angle when I block you. But you can see one foot deep, there's a bathroom on the other side of this. And fitting that bathroom in to make it look larger, these cabinets are actually touching the other cabinets on the other side in the drywall. Let me close these up. How's it going so far? Is the light getting in your eyes? All right. Well, I'm going to show you this over here. This is a tight space. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow our camera person to go inside here. And uh, you're going to see yourself in the mirror probably because there's a mirror right over there. But um, take a look at what we did here. I'll step in for a moment. This is granite. This is an undermount porcelain sink. And uh, this is a high-end feature in a small house. We rounded it here. But more important than rounding it here, we rounded the back wall. We curved the back wall. Look at their beautiful ceiling fixture. You know, we have some really wonderful things happening in a small footprint. One foot deep cabinet, which is, would never fit a sink normally. But because of that round back, we're able to make that work. We're able to get a little bit more depth to make that fit. I'm going to let you sneak around and look at the toilet side. It's not real exciting, but remember, the drywall that you're seeing in this toilet side is only a half inch thick because right on the other side of that drywall, there's not a wall, there's those cabinets. So we're, we're not having a wall thickness in there to have to waste the space. So see if you can work yourself around there, and I'll kind of swing this through. And that is a toilet. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> this is the uh, pathway down to the to the lower level, or to the basement as we call them here. And uh, you're passing the doorway to the garage right now. I want to show you out in the garage before we go downstairs. Again, this 
elm floor, this hand scraped elm floor has been carried throughout the entire first floor except for the carpet in the great room in that small area. That makes a home feel larger because you're not chopping it up and making different floor colors and different floor choices by putting tile in the bathroom per se. So everything flows a little easier. And if you look at this house so far, this whole first floor has one traditional door on it. Now this, I'm not talking about an outside door, a steel door. One traditional interior door, normally you'd have six or seven. The bathroom door, that's it. The rest of them are all done with cabinets. So I want to take a look, see if we can get a bit, bit good view into the, um, into the garage here. A few Christmas decorations, a sign that uh, it goes outside in the summertime. This garage has a lot of things happening in it. If you look up at the ceiling and at the floor and just kind of look around in general, uh, you'll see that we have a lot of heating runs. We have living space built over here. So this is a, um, this is a 26 and a half foot wide house on a 40 foot lot with a four foot setback over there. And I want to show you something that will show you how we've done this garage and still have space for another two-car garage in the backyard on a small lot like this. And I'm going to grab something out of the cabinet here and see if it shows up on camera or not. There we go. All right, I don't know if this shows up well to you or not. Is that picking up? Our driveway as it comes in is highly stylized. Right now it has a lot of highly stylized snow over it, so we can't see it. We're not allowed to put a concrete driveway all the way around the back for drainage reasons and for municipal reasons. We have a fence between both the homes. This blue thing is, a, is our MyPad Ranch next door, MyPad 1. This is a house we're in right now, MyPad 2. And we created a hard surface stone, which is a traffic bond here, and a sidewalk here, and the car would just drive with its tires with straddling a strip of grass. So you're able to drive with wheels on the stone here, wheels on the concrete here, and go all the way around to the back of the house where we have a nice oversized one car, maybe a you know, tight two car garage here. And you still have a good backyard. You're still gonna have a patio here. We did grass areas, we did, we wanted these homes to be private on a tight lot. So we put a row of greens here. Uh, between the visuals from the patios. Uh, everything works just perfectly on this house uh, with being able to park in the backyard, being able to park in here, and also having carport areas. So if you want to just park your car anywhere along here for a party, you've got all kinds of parking space. Hope you could see that. Now let's go downstairs and see if you can follow me that way. The um, thing about uh, most homes today is most homes are built with a three foot wide staircase. Uh, when I built my first home a few thousand homes ago and 20 some years ago, I built with a four foot wide staircase because I wanted to give us something that was going to be different and feel bigger. So what we did here is a uh, three and a half foot wide staircase, which immediately tells somebody, hey, this is a small house, but why doesn't it feel small? Because we didn't try to put a three foot staircase, which we really easily could have done. We did that in the ranch, by the way. But in this house, we did a three and a half foot wide staircase. And I want to show you how we gave it a little bit of style with our carpet colors. See, we have a dark color here, then a light color, then two dark colors. And this is a uh, transition point from a basement that's dark to a basement that's not so dark. Oh, excuse me, it's very dark. We turn off your lights on you there. Let me uh, turn on some other lights here and try to show you what we've done down here. The basement of this house, because you have thicker walls in a basement, of course they're eight inches thick, upstairs they're not that thick. We have less square footage down in this basement than what we have upstairs. Pretty logical. 400 and some square feet on the first floor. This is, you know, under 400 down here. Uh, but yet we've managed to fit in a theater seating type effect theater that would actually have a couch and a love seat. We've managed to fit in a another stool area for a bar where you could sit here. We wanted this to be its own living level. Uh, you could almost rent it out as its own living space. We have a bathroom down here. We have a bedroom down here. We have a washer and dryer down here. We have a theater and a kitchenette down here. 
let me show you the kitchenette in the theater, all in less than 400 square feet. Uh, enough space to put two stools, one here and one here. A little spot here to store some things. This is a, uh, uh, this is the rec room, but it doubles as a couple of other areas. Again, we have the birch floor, but look at what we did with the birch floor here. We took and we swung the material so that it has this nice arc going on to it, going to the carpet. Notice how we knew that this was going to be coming out, so we designed our step in so that you're able to walk around this. We were able to put a full size, again, big furniture here for this particular couch area. We have some uh, pipes and structure that had to go in here, so we used this and we built this out, painted it a different color, and notice how we've staggered our movie poster here up eight inches higher than this movie poster here so that you have this effect because I am standing on an eight inch platform. So just like in a theater, we have uh, created a little bit of a, of a, of a way for you to have a uh, theater seating or a uh, um, balcony type seating up in this back row. And if you look over here now, you've got a good view from there. You can just stay right there for the moment. This room is set up with um, I'm going to see if I can turn this light over here to give you a little more light on this so you can get a better view. And maybe this light over here. Notice our track lights. If we keep our track lights on the outside of a theater, I, I've built million dollar basements for folks, and we'll try to put our track lights on the side and face them toward the wall. That way you're able to keep light in the room, but still if I had a projector in here, I could project my screen here. Very limited on space down here as, as, as we went through. So what we did, you know, we have full headroom here, just like we would upstairs. Here it goes a little lower for my heat runs. But uh, here we have a theater. This is a 50-inch TV. And um, uh, we have a, uh, uh, a sink here, because it's also our kitchenette. We don't have the space to do a kitchen and a theater, so we incorporated them both. So here we have an under cabinet. Here, there's a lot of plumbing in this area that's going out to the outside of the house, uh, in particular for our drains and for our sewage and things that's coming out of here. We have a sump pump required by municipalities to put it off the front of the house. So here is both our sump pump and where we put our equipment for our DVD player. So we've partnered that together. We have a drawer over here and we have a uh, cabinet over here and you can see we have plumbing going through there. Um, over here we have a beautiful little uh, refrigerator freezer and over here we have a really nice small microwave. So you have a small kitchenette down here. Uh, no stove but hey <laughs> give us another year and we can figure out where to put that in this house. So we've got the uh, TV, the surround sound speakers in here. We've got some nice color going on. And uh, I'm going to try to switch places now. And you can stand over there. You're right where they come down by the stairs. And um, we have some neat things to look at here. This is a three foot wide hallway. A little hard to see all this, but this is as, as small of a bathroom as you're likely to find in a, in, in, in a home, but it's, uh, it, if everything fits well, you'll find that the door clears the toilet by about an inch and a half. You'll see that over here, we have a vessel bowl sink. Again, why sacrifice high style just because the house is small? We have a little storage area under here for some toilet paper. Uh, we do not have this set up yet the way that it was envisioned to be set up. Let me explain that briefly to you. I want towel storage in here. I want everything. You know, a small room, but I still want towel storage. So what I did was I designed a very... I'll get out of your way here so you can see this. Let me just move this. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell from that angle, but there's a very deep uh, area here. So I put my sink up here and I put a really deep area back here. And all I'm going to do is stack up towels all the way to the ceiling fold them up nice. And then I'm going to take, this hasn't been done yet, but I'm going to take a mirror like this, mount it on the wall on the side of the, of the uh, this is a medicine cabinet, and okay, hinges open like this. And it's going to hinge open so that if I want a mirror, I can just hinge it open. Well, you can't see that at all, can you? But you can just hinge that open. That'll be put into the wall. And the towels are then behind it. So it's a... Uh, what we call a work in progress that hasn't progressed all the way. Uh, but uh, some nice high style things in here. We've got a three by three shower stall here. We've got a, um, uh, we, we've got a nice uh, 
you'll trust me on this, you won't be able to see it. We've got a nice light around the corner here, a little sconce light. And um, come on into the bedroom. The bedroom is a uh, very different sort of an area because bedrooms have to have a lot of space to them. I'm going to aim this around a little bit, see if you can get a better view of anything that we've got here. This is a queen size bed. Okay, so uh, when I'm designing a home, I, I design with furniture as a primary uh, item for me. I, I, they're not an afterthought. I'll do, design my furniture, then I'll design my walls, I like to say. So uh, it, this took a lot of figuring, but you know, we figured out what the height of our window well, this is a deep window well, an egress window as everyone calls them, and it's partially covered by the deck up there because this is a very tight lot house, so half of that is covered by the deck. There's a ladder here to get in and out. This is fiberglass. It looks like stone, a nice uh, nice look instead of a you know corrugated metal of some kind. And this is wide enough here. This is 49 inches, so if I wanted to take and put in a dresser, this is my dresser area. Got a nice dresser area there. What I have here this is not a, cl a closet for the room. This, you're not going to be able to see that real well, is my furnace. Let me see if I can get a little light on, that, on the subject there. Turn that around so you can see the furnace. There you go. The furnace over here, this is how you get in and change your filters right over here. So where's the closet? Well, this big double thing here. It's going to double as a closet, but before we go in there, as long as you're standing right there, lest I forget, Little things like, well, where's the TV going to go? If I don't have a dresser here, I can put it on the wall, but if it's hanging on the wall, I'm going to hit into it because this is only 30 inches wide for passage. I'll be hitting into the TV. So we alcoved the TV area into the wall so that you're not hitting into even a flat panel TV, as you know, it sticks off the wall six inches or so. So we're able to push this flat in by doing this alcove here. Uh, now let's look at the closet. The closet, let me turn on the light in here. The closet is your laundry room down here, and it's also your closet, <laughs> okay? So if you, um, it's also where you get to your water heater over here. This is the heart of the house. This is your basement mechanicals. So if you work your way around here, I'll get out of the way, and our, our camera lady can, can see what we've done here. Maybe you can stand back over there. You can see how this is under the stairs. All right, and we've got hanging here, enough hanging here and a little bit of hanging there and washer and dryer, very convenient. You can take your stuff out and hang it right up. And uh, this is a very, uh, a very accessible area. All the way under the stairs, we put the uh, carpet. So uh, every square inch finished down. I'm gonna turn off the light here now, so close that up. And we're gonna turn off the camera for a moment. You're gonna join me upstairs as we go up to the second floor. See you in a minute. Hey, one more thing. This is a bonus for you. Before we leave the basement, as I was turning off the lights, I thought, oh, I forgot to show you this. Love the style to put things in. You know, we have this drop coming off of the ceiling here for our heating run, right? Not the most attractive thing in the world, but a necessary thing. We want to break that up. We want the room to feel wider. When you put a drop in going this way, it's going to make the room feel narrower. So what we did was I we dropped this curve, made this curve going in here, and it just drops down an inch and a half below here. So your eye follows the color of this curve, and it makes your room feel wider. And then we took that curve, and we imitated that pattern on the floor. Remember I showed you that curve over there before? Take a look at the floor here. We curved the wood. This is hardwood again, the, the, the hand-scraped elm. And we curved the wood on a cut so that it really looks nice. Not only do we have carpet here, which is a nice thing for the, for the couch, but if I happen to spill a little drink or something over here, it at least has a chance to not hit the carpet, you know, so, and uh, out of the refrigerator as well. So it, it's a nice little detail. We could have easily just carpeted the thing, you know, or not done the drop here, but I really like, you know, doing this little extra here and there to make everything work. Now let's go upstairs. Here I am at the bottom of the stairs. You are at the top of the stairs right now where the, ca where the camera is. And um, uh, remember I talked about high-end materials and things like that? This carpet is really great, great carpet. I mean, look at the style of this carpet. This is not a 
cheap apartment grade. This is a forty to fifty dollar yard type carpet. This is really good stuff. So I'm, and again we have the wider staircase here. Now a lot of times with our upstairs, what I'll do if I'm if I'm de if I'm decorating, I decorate and I design all the homes. So when I'm decorating it, I'll say you know I want white upstairs. To me, white is peaceful. It's also bigger. You know, the white doesn't close you in so for peaceful sleeping I love white um, and so the upstairs in a lot of the homes you visit of ours will be white this is um, white with uh, the darker wood on it from the downstairs because you're gonna touch this as you go up and down the stairs your hands are always gonna be on there so we don't want that to be white so we, we change that out uh, little details like our handrails instead of being a round handrail which everybody has you know we do this nice oval carved one it's not quite the big one you see in your mom's or your grandma's house but it's a nice shape it feels good on the hand and uh, I just I, I really like that uh, what I'm gonna try to do when you get to the top of the stairs um, I'm going to try to switch places with the camera person. You're going to stand right where I am, okay? So let's do a little merry-go-round here. <clears throat> Step down just a couple. What I want you to see is a couple of things here. Number one, again, I want the house to feel big. It's a really small house in, by standards of today's living. This house feels big because of various things. One of the things when you come upstairs to make it feel big is volume. We have this huge volume here. I mean, we're, we're 12 feet high up here. We're using our attic space to make this feel big, all right? We're limiting our hall space. I mean, I don't think you saw any halls in this house yet unless you count that little bathroom access in the basement as a hall, which is about three by three feet. So getting rid of halls. The laundry room, which you're looking at right now, you might be getting blared out by this light facing right at you, but some of the cutest windows I've ever had the experience of putting into a home. I want the home to have windows everywhere because this has to feel like a big house. So here you have a small, really cute, 12 inch wide, 14 inch wide window here. Here you're seeing the laundry area of the house. Laundry area of the house, you know, you close your doors here and you've got this closed up. But you keep the doors open. You notice how we planned that out so that this wall protrudes out and you're able to have a very good uh, ex door not in the way experience. If this was just flat and you folded that out, you know, you, you have to leave space for this kind of thing to happen. Otherwise, you're going to have an issue with the door being in the way when people are walking through the hall. So we've kept these concealed so the doors can stay open and not be in your way. We've put a pan under here. This pan fiberglass uh, in case your washer machine were to overflow the water would go downstairs it's also a great location for the it's between all the bedrooms there's three bedrooms up here and it's also right at the top of the stairs so if you have to go up to put in your laundry detergent or some softener or something while you're you know while you're living your life downstairs real easy you don't have to go through the whole upstairs to get to your laundry so we have a window up here washer and dryer nice cabinets and the nice cabinets here, you'll notice we did some really cool things. We try to mix up our, our, our hardware design a little bit. Um, I'm going to stand and look at, well, maybe right up here, if you can peek up there. It's a little alcove shelf up here, really cute. Here's another cute thing over here. This is all in the hallway. I just want to show you hallway stuff. This transom window. This is something that's contemporary, but it's also old-fashioned because they did this many, many years ago to try to get circulation. They used to open, you know, and you'd be able to get circulation through the house but still have privacy. That was uh, the idea of the old transom windows. In this house, you also have... This is really cool if you can see that. Why don't you stand back there just a little bit, Mrs. Camera Person, and uh, you'll see that this is a kid's loft. Our bedrooms in this house are not really bedrooms. They are what you would call cabins for the kids. Cabins, uh, like in a boat, are very Spartan. They have Everything's built in, so they're really cool, but there's not a whole lot of extra space in here. So I'm going to show you our kids' cabins, all right? Now, remember, I have a kids' cabin here, and I have a kids' cabin here. Now, if somebody said, I don't want little kids' cabins, I want a big cabin, all we have to do here is build our wall straight through, and we're able to put a door here, take out that wall. That wall's been designed with no plumbing or no heating or anything in it. So we're able to retrofit this house to being two real generous sized bedrooms because the master is pretty generous and you'll see that in a moment. So we're able to take out that construction there and put 
this in. Now, but I'll tell you, the people who have seen this house, the kids are begging them to leave it just like it is because this is so cool. Kids like small areas. They like to hide in boxes. You know how that is when they're little? So this is a little bit bigger than a box, but not a whole lot bigger. And uh, uh, you're going to have to really to get the idea of space in this room. Yeah, stand back as far as you can with that camera. We've built in everything so that this place has generous walk-through spaces, three and a half, four feet, you know, in, in most areas. Look at this stack of gorgeous, these are custom built because you can't buy built-ins of this nature and so these are all custom built. Nice stack of drawers. The furniture is in the house. Here we have, all right, what are we going to do for a bedside? We've done a bunk bed here. A little short on that one there, but that's a bunk bed. We put TVs in at the footboard of each bed so that each kid can watch or play their video games. Oh, video games, tell me about that. And we've got drawers here. I've got this wire down here to go to these for DVD players. So you can play the DVD player on both of them or one of them. Did a chair area here. So if you wanted to sit here, maybe somebody that was a little smaller than me, a kid wanted to sit there, you'd be able to have a space, maybe put a cushion there, you know. And now stand over here. There's a closet over here. Um, I'll show you the closet. It's not a bad size closet. Pretty generous, actually. You could probably do two small kids in there, but one would have all kinds of room. But I want to show you what we did here for our, um, for our ladder. Our ladder in this house is um, going up to the second floor. Now, you climb on here, you climb on here, and of course I can climb on it, but I look like a circus bear climbing on it. And then you climb up the rest of this over here. Now I'll let the camera person get up there and take a look themselves so that they're not... Uh, but I want to show you what the loft looks like. So we'll turn this off for a moment or we'll see if she can do it with the, uh, with the camera being held. We'll see what the talent level is there, huh? And uh, <laughs> here you go. All right. Our camera person is superstar today. There's a, uh, should be a light switch up there somewhere to turn on. And I'm going to go out in the hallway here. And um, not a whole lot of headroom up there, but now you're up in the loft, thanks to our very talented camera person. Kelly's been able to handle that. And uh, I'm down here and I'm just having a lot of fun looking up and seeing my camera person crouched up in about four and a half or five feet of headroom up there. We did fit that up there for an additional television area up there. You'll see right now we have a lot of pillows. Kids love pillows, so we just threw a bunch of pillows up there. That way when they come and visit, they can have some fun there. Turn around and take a look at the rest of the loft while you're up there. Take a little spin around the loft. You can see we have some track lights up there. We also have some, some flush lights up there so that you have plenty of lighting. But look at that window. We have a window up there. And that's an active, obviously, a real window that faces outside. What kid wouldn't love to have a area like that? That's about 10 by 10 up there, as, a, as, as, as I recall, without measuring. We're going to show you the other bedroom down here. It's a little bigger than the other one, not much. So turn that off and come on down. Before we leave this smaller bunk bedroom, kids' cabin, I did want to tell you two more things I just thought of here. So here we go. The windows here. I just love the idea of sleeping next to a window. It just seems like such a neat kid idea to be able to sleep there and see the the snow coming or to see the stars at night. Just such a great thing to do. Now, that could be dangerous too. So those are made out of safety glass. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about that. And the window up here is a slider so you could slide it open. Uh, we have very heavy duty screens on those so you don't fall out and they only open up halfway. So, And down here we have the same thing. And um, you're able to really have a nice... And also show you one other item if you can peek down here. We don't want to lose any space for storage. So there we have it. We have storage in drawers underneath here. This is a built-in platform. You can take that out if you want. A little sawzall action. Now over to the other bedroom. If you back up, and yeah, let's take a look at this one. This is um, 
very similar to the other bedroom, except we wanted to put a queen-size mattress in here. And if you look over here, I'm going to see if I can find my... Uh, uh, I didn't find what I was looking for, but that's okay. Here, step on over here. You go in that corner over there, and I'll sit right over here. We did the built-in nook for the television, but not just out of drywall. In this one, we did it out of wood, and we did this little rack on top, and I, I wish I had a DVD to put in here. I'm going to have to get one and, sh and put it up here for display purposes. But this little groove we had put in here is just so you could put in, I think we could fit six or seven DVDs up here. And it's just kind of cute to put a, a row of DVDs on there. Here you have, again, the DVD player shelf down here. You've got a couple of drawers there. We've got some drawers under the bed here, which, um, and we did something extra in this house. This is a uh, bookcases. So we did, here's a cool clock. It looks like it's melted by the sun, but it just kind of hangs on top of a shelf. Kind of fun. And uh, well you can put books and things up there. I just thought that was a fun idea. Now, if you go around over here to the bedside, I'm going to just show you the, the closet here. It goes back this way a little bit. So it goes way over here. But we have a nice size closet over here. And um, again, we did the fancy moldings going around the door. We're not trying to do anything in here that you wouldn't say is something you would find in a million dollar house. We have here is a uh, narrow window on this side because it looks good from the back of the house. But we have a huge double window on that side, which you'll see as we leave the room. So, very generous with room all over the place in this house. Now let's head over to the, the master bedroom and the kids' toilet. The kids' toilet area here is kind of a fun thing. If you stay back there a little bit so you can get a good idea of perspective, I'm going to uh, show you a couple of things. This is, a again, one of those narrow windows. And you can't tell from where you are, and even if you got close, you wouldn't be able to see it that well. But this is a pebble glass finish. You can hear my fingernails. The pebble glass means that you're not going to see through there. So you don't have to put a curtain over here. You get some good privacy. Maybe you can't see that. Again, the fat grid between it. And uh, the pebble glass is really neat. While you're this close, let me just show you another thing. You see how the, how the wood here angles? The wood angles with the angle of the drywall. We have this angled drywall, so it looks very, uh, uh, very contemporary, very nice. And uh, over on the other side of the room, on the other hand, uh, if I can get you behind here, you know, where do you put the towels in this house? Well, we put them right on the door. Look at that. And this is a towel curio cabinet. Tal curio cabinets are fun because they don't take up all the space up to the ceiling, although it could if you wanted to. But I thought this would be a great spot to put a sculpture or something nice. So we did the countertop, we did a tal curio cabinet. Uh, another little thing while we're in here, boy, oh, these things we can go on forever about detail. This is a, uh, a nicer floor in here. You have to reach down nowadays to see if they're tile or if they're, uh, or if they're, um, uh, vinyl. This is tile, ceramic tile. Take a look. Remember we talked about the white in the house upstairs? We've got brown down there for the quarter round or what we call shoe. The quarter round and shoe in the dark color instead of staying in white is a good idea because what you're going to find is when you're cleaning the house and mopping the floors that white woodwork is going to get kind of grungy looking pretty quick. So by putting on the darker color wood as a molding strip that kind of complements your cabinet in this white area, it works real nice to kind of work in serviceability uh, as well as just giving it a snap of color surrounding the room. So, um, and uh, let's see, we've got the uh, bathtub here because every house needs a full bathtub. But if you're counting, by the way, this is a full bathtub here. We've got uh, another full bath you're going to see in the master bedroom. We have a half bath on the main floor, which was that nice curved countertop that looked kind of like a football. And then in the lower level, in the basement, we had another full bath with the shower stall. It's four bathrooms in a house that is 1,050, 1,080 square feet. And enough bedrooms, because we have four bedrooms, two counting the one down there, to sleep eight. So, okay, back into action here, going toward the master bedroom. And you can step out into the hallway there a little bit. All right. How am I doing so far? It's our first one of these, and I love it. 
master bedroom, master bathroom. Let's get you your first impression. I'm going to get out of the way. Let's have Kelly step back there, and I want you just to kind of walk into the room. So you're walking into the room and seeing a uh, sort of a large room here that's in a pretty um, uh, small house. But this room feels large. You're walking into the closet. Let me turn on a light in there. There's windows everywhere. There's design elements everywhere. This bedroom is loaded with architectural flair and architectural design. Uh, I, I, I just, uh, I love this room for so many reasons. And um, if you stand where your first impression is, let me, Kelly, stand right in the doorway there. Uh, just keep backing up to the camera lenses right in the doorway. Okay, this is you entering the room. All right. Now I'm going to step out of the way here and I want you just to walk into the room as you naturally would and look at what we have going on. Okay. Now, to play a little, uh, a little game here with you, I'm getting you dizzy, I'm sure. If I could get the camera to position back in the corner by that big window. You know, we have a huge double window there. You don't need to see it right now. You'll see it. You've already seen it. I want you to stand way in the back there as much as you can. That's good. Because I want you to see a little trick that we did in here to really expand the space. Normally, this sitting area, which has a quarry on top, is, uh, would be the stair hole. This, in most homes, would be a corner that would go all the way to the ceiling. What I did here is I stole the space over the stair hole. So when we're going up the stairs from downstairs, our head is just clearing this corner. Our head is just clearing that corner. So we've done this step up this way, this way, that way to get our stair hole to give us space in the master bedroom that would not normally be here if you did a standard design house. Cruise ships, they do that all the time. They're taking negative areas in a house. I mean, if this was the big, huge space over the stairs, we've just used all this space for what? Nothing. So here, when you came in the door as you came in, this room opened up visually. We tried to keep this above the five foot mark. So even a shorter person would be able to come in and instantly feel a large room. It's not a large room, but it's fairly long. Again, from where you're at right there, just stay right there. I'm going to, we're using the full depth or width of the house. I am all the way over the garage right now, and you are all the way over at the other side of the house. This is the full 26 and a half feet that we're using here. If you look up just a little bit, tilt up, you'll see that we did an over the top closet. Uh, well, I call it a peekaboo. A peekaboo over the top means that we're not putting a wall up there and dividing this thing into sections. We're trying to keep this house open. So you're able to use 26 feet in your, in, in, in your master bedroom in a 1,050 square foot home. We're going over the garage. You've got tons of hanging space. Look at what we have here. We have a space here for what we call the tall boy dresser. So you could go as tall as you want. For the man's dresser, it could be the wardrobe. Over here, we have the six foot space. Now I know that most six foot dressers are going to have a mirror over them. So this gives you instant uh, appeal as you come in. It feels larger because you have a mirror here. We've tucked in one of those one and a half or one foot wide windows here. We've given you a great art spot over this bed. Now this is a queen bed right now. And um, you know what I like to do with the queen bed? For decorating sake, I usually like to do that. It gives me a nice snap of color. My cleaning crew, you know, they, they like to put things back but I love to put things back so they have something to do when they get here. So there we go. This is a good spot for a couple of nice contemporary looking uh, sideboards. Uh, but look at the picture wall we have here. And from that angle, look at the, what we've done with the lighting. We've done these little portholes, which I think is kind of a nod to the cruise ship. Porthole, porthole, porthole. There's five of them going across the ceiling. And as a design element, your eye just kind of follows that and goes, straight across. And uh, we created this drop here. I could have just made that angle go straight to this wall from the ceiling, but this little drop carries your eye all the way across there a little better. Um, we've done some really remarkable things with shelving up here, as I said, over the plant, over the uh, uh, stair hole. Kelly, can you get way in that corner over there maybe? You can get a better picture of what we've done here for volume ceiling. Um, you can see how We've got this light, maybe it's a little out of your way, but this pendant light hanging here, which is kind of cool. Um, we've got these 
little knick-knack or decor shelves. And then if you just tilt up one more over here, this is a little bit of a hard angle. But in this corner, we even did another shelf because I didn't want that part of the room to feel like that's the only thing that's doing that. We want to spread that concept out over the whole room. So putting this little corner shelf here imitates what we have going on up here. You know, it seems like an unusual thing to save till the end. But let's look at our closet, and then we'll look at our master bathroom. So if we can work around here. I know you've already been in the closet here once today, with when we did our initial coming into here. But I want to point something out in here. This closet, you can stand right about there. This closet has a lot to it. This, first of all, is a real generous width. You could put a dresser on this wall if you wanted to, or a chair. But this is a generous closet. It's got volume ceilings, so you're not going to feel cramped in. It has a window, aiding again to the volume feeling. A window, there's a small window on the front of the house. But while you're in that position, look at what we have here for, for luxury. We have some California closet organizers with the metal rods. This is a nice quality product. You can reposition these and put different shelving arrangements or shoe bins or what have you in these. So this is a high luxury closet and it's deep, it's big, it's roomy, and you're not in a big house. I would stack this house up against some much larger homes. Now you're going to just do a pivot there. So I'm going to go around to the bathroom, okay? I'll come right toward you here. Now the bathroom in here, I'm pretty happy with the way the bathroom came out. To put a master bathroom separate in a house of this size is not done very often because of the fact that well, we're not building homes this small anymore. But it's so tempting from a design point of view to just combine this with the other bathroom next door and make a really big bathroom and have everybody share it upstairs. But, uh, so we can do that. This is right next to it. So if somebody wanted to option this and say, you know what, I just want this huge bathroom. I want the separate whirlpool. I want the separate shower. I want the, you know, uh, the big tiled shower, whatever. We can do that. But this is the version of this, which is still private. We created this three-foot vanity. And look at what we did to give you some style. We ran the floor tile up the wall so that the floor tiles goes completely up the wall. We did the nice style on the cabinet handles here again. Three drawers on this side, that's decent. We did some really nice thing with the shower stall in here. Let me explain something to you about that shower stall. If I would have done this not a tiled shower, you know, here we have the little stone uh, dish on the side. Here we have the molded pan on the floor made out of fiberglass. If I would have done this whole thing out of fiberglass, I would have lost about an inch and a quarter on each side, almost three inches of space uh, on the whole width and on the depth. And in a small home, we can't afford to lose that. So this is tiled so that we're not having that extra thicker fiberglass molding. And again, it goes all the way to the ceiling. And if you can peek up, look at that ceiling, how tall it is. We've got these first two pictures right over this window. This I'm going to stand out of the way so Kelly you can stand back there and get a little bit better view of how this works all the way to the ceiling when you come in this room. And um, the pebble glass again so you're not going to see through it. And then lastly in this room we've got a towel cabinet. It's a little deeper than a normal cabinet. It gives you a spot to put some towels in this bathroom. Uh, there's a there's a uh, you don't have to see it but there's some towel hanging behind here uh, behind the door. So volume ceilings, you know, it's right as you come into this room so you can use the bathroom without disturbing the person who's sleeping. Um, by the way, I don't know if I even mentioned this to you, but uh, our TV in here is uh, about a 55-inch TV in this, in this small of a, of a house, and it just looks wonderful. We can also put a fireplace in this bedroom. Uh, if we did that, let's so bring around the rosy here. If we did that, we would be putting the fireplace right here over the stairs. So I could have done a fireplace front, maybe even a corner exposure right here and done a direct vent going up. I would have had to not have that plant shelf there to do it. But um, we could have still kept the TV here. But look at what a nice arrangement that makes. I'm going to take this back to that cute little shelf in that kid's bedroom and uh, show people where, that, where those DVDs hang in. Thank you for joining us here today. We're going to go and look at our ranch my pad or what we call a my pad one if you're looking at these in order that's coming up next <laughs>